my name is Gray, they name pronouns. Um, identities, there's a lot of them. I don't know, labels can be an interesting thing. Sometimes they can feel a little monolithic and feel like I'm being put on a box if I have a label. Um, sometimes they can be liberating and being like, this is a community I'm a part of and I love these people and I want to claim myself as one of them. Um, so it's kind of a convoluted thing, but this is where I'm at right now. Um, I would say trans, non-binary, um, as far as gender, lesbian, sapphic. If I'm like talking to people in the dominant narrative, I would say like queer, because it's all encompassing. Um, but yeah, disabled. I always put disabled at the front of it. So yeah, I have a couple disabilities. I have POTS. Um, lots of chronic illnesses, fibromyalgia, chronic migraines, um, GERD, autism, lots of, we had a full spectrum here, so, yeah. POTS is, it's an autonomic nervous system syndrome, um, it stands for postural, so like whether you're laying down or standing up, orthostatic, which is having to do with your bloodstream and your like blood vessels tachycardia which has to do with your heart and then syndrome so it's kind of essentially it affects my heart rate and my blood pressure um, so it just makes me really dizzy when you're standing up and then I can't stand up for long periods of time because my heart rate goes up to like 130 in crazy amounts so yeah and neurologists and people were telling me like you're not getting enough sleep or um, it's just anxiety a lot of times they would just tell me to like take down my school schedule, like not do as much, because I had my whole schedule packed, but, um, no, nope, it wasn't that. <laughs> um, yeah, lots of just things saying it was like my fault, internal gaslighting, um, that I'm not like not taking care of myself well enough, things like that. I finally got like a migraine doctor that like validated me. He was the first one to like validate my symptoms and be like, no, there's like not something, like it's not all in your head. There's actually something going on here. Um, and he like helped me found treatments that actually worked for me and not just like, generally when you like have things going on in the chronic, chronic illness world, they'll like put you on just one medication or like keep trying things for you and not actually try and figure out the problem. But with him, he helped me like, with medications that are actually helping me um, and was like the first thing that was like wow okay I'm finding some relief from this and like feeling some difference from it so that was like very validating he was also like queer as well um, I just noticed that like people who have more identities that aren't um, within the like heteronormative world they're a lot more accepting as far as like liberation and making sure um, that those that you're cared for and taken care of so accessing healthcare is one of the hardest things in my life insurance is just there to profit off of us um, doctors aren't necessarily there to help us heal they're a lot of the times they're just trying to get by and um, that can be very difficult <laughs> um, also like pharmacies, pre-authorizations, like coverage, everything is so nuanced. It's meant to be complicated. It's meant for us to not understand it. Pride can be inaccessible because it's a lot of walking, a lot of parading. Um, also just like what's dominated in society as far as like queer culture is like clubbing, bars, like partying, like going to pride, um, lots of things that are like high intensity stimulation and like music and like moving, um, which can can be fun for some people if it's within their limits, but like that can be very overstimulating and be like kind of detrimental to people's health and disabilities. Um, so that could definitely be a disconnect. Access needs are like not something that makes us extra or things that are like we're just doing for attention or things like that but realizing that access needs are like the bare minimum of what we need to have the fruitful lives that we deserve
like if you need to ask how I need my needs met for like something that I'm going to like just ask me um and I think people are afraid to go into that dialogue because it's something that's uncomfortable and unfamiliar um but like the more that you step into those spaces the more we'll feel welcomed and the more that we feel like our needs are being cared for. I have a very supportive and like incredible partner. They've like completely shifted how I see my care. Um, I know that I like can be cared for and I know that my needs are met but I've never seen that reciprocated in another person especially someone who's caring for me in that capacity. These are invisible disabilities that you can't necessarily see outside like you can see me with my cane that's like some form of visible but like other than that you can't really see from the outside that like these are things that are happening unless you pay attention um so just like understanding that like a lot of this is internal we want to be just seen as people if you want to know more about my disability i'm great to have that like i'm, I'm fine to have that dialogue i would love to have that dialogue but also like I'm so much more than like the disabilities that I have. Like I'm a writer, I'm a poet, I'm in school, I have like a loving queer community that I'm a part of. There's so many other facets to my life that if you, I just wish people would like see that the, we're all complex. Like every human being is so complex. We all have access needs that we need. Just some people's needs are met by society and the rest of us are just left to scrounge for ourselves.